Hi, and welcome to this video presentation focused on Chapter 2 of Cole and Kelly 2020. As you know by now, I'm Phil Kelly, and I'll be outlining the content of this chapter with you today. I hope that you've had the opportunity to read the chapter, and you'll get more from this presentation if you read it first. As I said with Chapter 1, it's also a good idea for you to create your own summary, where you paraphrase Chapter 2 and practice academic reading and writing skills. In the previous session, where we talked about Chapter 1 and what management means and is, we recognised using the landscape acronym that the environment shapes and addresses our understanding of what management may mean in a particular organisation. The environment is both external and internal for the organisation. And in this chapter and session, we continue with our goal to get a better understanding of what management means by exploring the internal context further. To understand management, we need to understand the organisation, which is the topic of chapter two. In particular, we will explore what an organisation is, the types of organisation, and how they may be similar and different. And we'll also look at the goals and purpose of the organisation and therefore implications for management style and practice. So in the previous chapter, we also introduced the POMC approach. And it's clear that the way managers plan, lead, organise, motivate and control will be influenced by attributes of the organisation. Things like its size and number of employees, how old it is, its location and the type of industry it's operating in. This relationship between the environment and management and leadership will be further explored in Chapter 8. But for now, our main focus is simply on introducing organisations, the place where management is needed. So looking at how organisations differ and their similarities in particular. So having read this chapter and done your own study around it, taken part in various activities, I hope at the end of this you should have attained the following. And so at the heart of all this is an understanding of organisations is essential to our understanding of management, which is really what the book's about and what part one in particular is about. The vignette on page 17 looks at several different types of organisation. A couple that you may be familiar with, like Apple, Amazon. If you're in the UK, then the NHS, whether you're in the UK or where you are, I'm sure you've come across the UN and small medium enterprises. And really by looking at the vignette, it should help you understand how companies do vary in their size from giants with millions of employees, right down to organizations that only have one or two employees. And we can look at organizations that make trillions of dollars or pounds compared with those that may make a relatively small amount or indeed don't have profit as their goal at all and really concerned with providing a public service or something along those lines. So the purpose and goal of those organisations in the vignette, their size, location, age and all sorts of attributes shows us that organisations do vary immensely. And what you need to be thinking about is how might management be interpreted in those different types of organisations? What sort of management styles may be necessary? and how do all of those vary as well. But for now, I think the most important thing is just recognizing what an organization is and the different attributes of them. And again, if you read the chapter, uh, certainly from page 16, uh, there's various uh, definitions of what an organization is and the attributes of it. So make sure that you familiarize yourself with those. But really it says an organization is a group of people working together And that's one of the key aspects of the definition that we'll work on. So we can have different categories of organisation, different labels, different types. 
uh, and we can sort of provide a bit of a structure to help us break these down and I've done that on this slide. So let's start with the public sector, uh, those organisations that are not focused on profit but providing a public service. Uh, sometimes they will be government run either at the central level or at a local level and sometimes that will include things like our not-for-profit charities and other organisations. And again they will have different goals, uh, different ways of being funded, different rules uh, than perhaps some of our private sector organisations that will have profit maximisation at least as one of their goals driving how they do things. So the way that the organisation is registered in the eyes of the law uh, will mean that it may be incorporated or not, maybe a small sole trader partnership kind of organisation, something like some some organisation that provides a service to you at home, you know, a window cleaner, uh, the local milk person who delivers the milk or something along those lines, uh, someone who comes and does jobs for you at the house. It could even be a, a dentist, but they're more likely to be a smaller organisation these days. Um, and then we've got the sort of larger organisations that do tend to be incorporated. Either they've been registered at companies' house in the UK, they're a limited company, limited by guarantee or shares. Those shares uh, in the company that give control over the organisation may be sold publicly or privately. Um, and there are various other legal aspects to those organisations that govern how they can do certain things. But for now, I think the main sort of distinctions that we want to emphasise is perhaps more around the goal of the organisation. And we'll touch on goal again later in this presentation. So are they there to make money and do other things like that? Or are they there to provide some kind of public service? But even those organisations that are there to make money, we'll still talk about things like corporate social responsibility, the triple bottom line and other things where their goals may extend to not just looking after the shareholders, but to a broader set of stakeholders. And that's a trend that's been growing for the last couple of decades uh, in many parts of the world. So looking at different company attributes, attributes of the organisation, certainly from the opening vignette, one thing that you will have noticed is the number of employees or the financial turnover does vary immensely from organisation to organisation. Uh, and we can see lots of organisations that are what we might classify as large with more than 249 employees, so 250 and above uh, in our large category, um, quite a lot in the medium category between 50 and 250. Then we've got quite a few in the small and micro categories. Certainly the number of employees will affect the way that we manage, but it will also affect many aspects of the POMC approach. The need to plan, organize, motivate and control will be different and will pose different challenges dependent on the size of the organization. And quite a few studies since famous studies in the 1960s have tried to show the relationship between these internal context attributes like size age and other things we'll talk about, and the way that we manage the management style, the leadership style, the way that we organise and structure the organisation. So why all this matters to you? Well, as a manager, depending on which organisation you go in, that context may well uh, influence your management style and what the meaning of management is in those organisations. To manage, you know, through communication using formal methods will be much more likely in a larger organization than it would be in a smaller where face-to-face -face communications may be more appropriate. Likewise, the age of the company will also affect how management is interpreted. And we can see from the data here that generally companies do seem to be getting a bit younger uh, and there's a huge number of companies out there that have only been in operation for less than the last five years. But we can also see quite a few organisations still that have been around for many decades. Why does this matter? How does this affect our interpretation of management? Well, again, we're going to talk a bit more about this in Chapter 8, uh, but things like how formal a company is, uh, how it does things, 
does it rely on lots of written rules and procedures? And those things do take quite a long time to create in organisations, as does a sophisticated and specialised structure. So quite a few aspects of what management means, the way that we manage, the way that we engage in the POMC activities have been shown to be related to company age. So when you're looking at things like case studies, do bear these things in mind when you read about how they're going about things, because the way that you do something in a young company might be quite different to one that's a bit older. Likewise, the way you do things in a pretty small company is likely to be different to the ways that you do it in a larger company. So when you read about management as a general idea, it is important to recognise that it won't be interpreted in exactly the same way in every organisation. Lots of people in the past have talked about things like location advantage, um, where the company is located may give it certain advantages, but also location affects the culture of the workforce. It can affect the culture of customers uh, and access to various resources. But I've shown, if we were looking at an example of the UK, where uh, companies tend to be located uh, around the country. But more and more, obviously, we're seeing uh, companies set up subsidiaries in other parts of the world. And again, then the influence of things like national culture become important uh, to understanding how to manage in different parts of the world. But you can see that uh, th there's a greater likelihood to find some larger organisations in certain parts of the world. So the United States having a particularly large amount of um, large companies, but also in countries like Brazil, Germany, Turkey, Poland, the UK uh, and France. We're also interested in organisations from the perspective of which industry they operate in. And again, there have been lots of studies that say the type of industry will pose different challenges for management and the manager operating in that industry, in an organisation in that industry. And so understanding you know, the demands of particular industries, the things that give them competitive advantages, the thing that influence their costs, the things that influence efficiency in those organisations will all be important. And we've shown uh, different industry groupings on this uh, slide and the percent of businesses by category. Again, have a think about the type of organisation you may be working for or the type of organisation you may want to work in. And when you're thinking about management, try and think a little bit about what the implications will be from an industry perspective. And then I think coming towards the end of the uh, presentation on chapter two, thinking about the fundamental purpose of the organisation. Goals, the things that you're trying to achieve, do vary immensely within organisations and between organisations. So goals can exist at the organisational level, the departmental level, right down to a small team or individual level. But we're more concerned at, here with the whole organisational level and we're more concerned with those goals that are oriented more towards the future, perhaps more what we might consider to be strategic goals. But what we're aiming to do, what we're aiming for, what we need to achieve all of those things will affect the way that we operate, what we see as important, and therefore also the way that we manage to try and accomplish those goals. So it is important when you're analysing organisations to look at what their goals are, and that will give you some clue of what management might mean in that kind of organisation. So I think traditionally, if we were looking at for-profit organisations, then the traditional theory of the, few, of the firm uh, was the guiding arm for them, which is profit maximisation and predominantly looking after the needs of the shareholder. But more recently, as we've said, the organisation has sort of grown uh, its goals in that sense, and they consider a broad range of stakeholders uh, and their needs when setting goals. And that might mean things like the triple bottom line, uh, looking not just at economic success, but social success as well, and looking after the environment. And many of these things are now incorporated in ideas such as co corporate social responsibility, which is covered later in the book. But what they're trying to do is going to influence how they manage. 
Okay then, uh, gone through the idea of organizations fairly quickly. I'm assuming that you've read the chapter for the detail, but also you need to read more widely than that and look at some of the chapter references, perhaps read some of those by yourself and do your own research or look at some more dedicated specialized textbooks on organization theory in particular, or even some organization behavior textbooks as well. Attempt some of the questions in order to improve your understanding. Having read the chapter, you should be well placed to answer some of the multiple choice questions. Have you identified an answer? The correct answer is a D, it's less than 250 for a medium. So we did say 250 and above was the larger organization, but you can go and have a look at paragraph 19 if you want to refresh your memory on that if you didn't get it right. Chosen your answer? We did talk about the difference between incorporated and unincorporated. We talked about corporations limited by guarantee. And again, read a bit more about that if you didn't get that as your answer. Okay, so coming to the end of the presentation, just to recap what we've been talking about and to guide your further research on it. We said that an understanding of organization, organizations is essential to our understanding of management, which is our primary goal uh, in this part of the book. And we said that we'd revisit it again later in chapter eight. We considered what we mean by an organization, particularly as collections of people in pursuit of a common goal. And we explored different types of organization from a legal point of view, and then went on to look at the attributes of organization, particularly in terms of size, age, industry, and so on. And throughout the presentation, I've tried to emphasize why it's important to think about these variables. Okay, that's the end of my chat on chapter two. I do suggest that you go back and read the chapter again. Uh, you do need to read these chapters a couple of times. And I do recommend that you try to paraphrase and write a pricey, maybe less than 500 words, putting things in your own words, practice the academic reading and writing skills. And then maybe you could compare your pricey with that of somebody else in your class and see what they considered to be important and how they went about writing it and together uh, learn through that process. But for now, that's the end. Good luck, and I'll see you in the session for chapter three later.